Welcome back, guys. You know what time it is? It's time for hopium filled content, especially when the market is crashing or collapsing. Is China collapsing our market? What the hell is going on? That's what we're going to dive into today's video. We have 300 online now. Wait till a few more jump on. So, thank you very much for joining us. You know what to do hit the likes, subscribe to the channel if you want to comment on the live streams or if you are watching this on a replay. Also, hit that. You can always unsubscribe later if you find absolutely zero value. Then you can go and hit the dislike and then leave a hate comment. It's all free for you to do in the description part down below. All right, so everyone jumping on. This is good fun. And uh, yeah, we're going to go through the BitBoy comments. I've got nothing bad to say towards BitBoy. So if you're here waiting for some of the drama, probably best to use your time elsewhere. Uh, but I will look at some of those comments in particular around inflation, deflation, Evergrande collapsing, China. Uh, we've got a, I've got a few charts I want to go through to, um, to understand what was going on and what is going on now. That's what I always do. That's what we're going to look at all the time. We have the panic cells going on. We have all sorts of jargon. But really, at the end of the day, we're seeing a few percent drop. So I'm not going to string you along to wind you up on some sort of global financial collapse of the economic system. There are so many channels out there doing that. And I've got plenty of information to explain why that is not happening today or tomorrow or next month or next year. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, which you should all do, links are down below. We, I look at that specifically in regards to the cycles. One in particular, you know what it is, Secret Life of Real Estate of Banking. I've posted this on Instagram and you guys that repost, you reading this, having the copy, buying it, you know, peeling it out of your Amazon packaging, I will repost you on Instagram because that is going to save you from getting royally royally screwed by the masses telling you all sorts of stuff about economic collapse and the new world order and the reset and yada, yada, yada. I'm not saying it's not happening. I'm just saying that there is some more time in the game before we get the major collapses, okay? A lot of this stuff is leading towards later in this decade. So I think the idea is on point. I think it's the theory about major collapses will, will definitely come. That's just the way the cycle uh, works. But at this point, I think a lot of these guys are calling it way too early. All right. So let's get some screens up here. I see all of your comments coming through. I will be moderating the chat as I can. If you are spamming the chat, I will obviously just ban you or put you in some timeout. So Keep keep a chill in that in that comment section. We've got 900 online. Let's start with the first piece here. Obviously, there's the Patreon group, guys. So if you're not in Patreon, make sure you check that out as well. Share this. All right. So Patreon is over here. There is a link to this down below. As you are aware, or hopefully you are, we've got about 14 left of the hundred. So that's down below. They all include the same thing. Some people have chosen to take this one. I don't know why. They can always cancel and go back to this cheaper one. Uh, and then everyone gets the same. It's just how soon you get into the investor accelerator and you will re you will keep that same price for as long as you are a member. So that's down below if you want to learn more about crypto trading and investing. Let's look at the first tweet I have here. So Elio Trades, you know, may know him, another YouTuber there is um, disagreeing with BitBoy about the top coming in for Bitcoin two weeks either side of September 27th. So I think he's given himself a little bit more time there. There is a tweet that was supposed to be up. And this is BitBoy's tweet. It's now been deleted. So I don't have that tweet there. But uh, fortunately, George has screenshotted it and thrown it up on one of his thumbnails. So the tweet was, I expect Bitcoin bull top within two weeks of September 27. This bleeds into October. So think about that. All in all, this cycle could wrap up before fall ends. So what? Do you, we're, I mean, we're coming into spring. You guys in the, in the Northern Hemisphere are going into autumn. Take your profits off the table. If you are in the green, we are right on track. So if you're not following, BitBoy posted this. It has now been deleted. 
Elio has replied to it. A few other people replied to it. I'm doing a quick reply to it, but looking at something way more important than another failed claim on a, a Bitcoin top. Um, I think calling tops and bottoms is stupid. That's what new investors want to hear because that's the way new investors think. If you go through and look at any long-term investor, anyone that's been in the game for a long time, they don't look to call things on the exact day and give you these exact prices and exact times because the markets don't work like that. But new investors think that's how you get ahead. Therefore, when you are giving, you know, you, you are, what, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> you're trying to promote to new investors. That's the way you have to speak. You, you're trying to speak a new investor's language. That's all it's about. So it's it's now deleted. Elliot says he disagrees. The big, uh, some of the big points here were the Fed tapering will play into Kathy Wood's deflationary shock. Kathy Woods is the CEO of ARK Invests. She's a heavy investor in Tesla and Bitcoin. So she's really big into the technologies. So that plays into her game of deflationary shock theory that will trigger more stimulus and inflation. Uh, okay. And then I obviously loves his NFTs and gaming. That's going to be a big one to push the rest of the market. I think that's going to be massive for Ethereum and that's obviously going to keep pushing the market as well. <clears throat> so I've responded to that looking in particular at just everything going everywhere. So trying to clear the noise up, the noise of Evergrande is collapsing, there's inflation risks, there's deflationary risks, there's all this sort of risks all the time. I just posted this this morning, so we're just going to click through this and then look at it on the charts. Stick with me, ask your questions, I'll get into them in just a moment. Traditional markets, inflation, deflation, Evergrande crashing, it doesn't really matter because the macro cycle is up into 2026, all right? That's not just my work, that's other guys that I read a lot of. So this is the sources down here. I'm looking to the side because I've got your comments on the side here, guys. Uh, that book there is Phil Anderson. So this is the 18.6 year cycle. This is over 220 years of data. The generational cycle. Now, these two guys don't know each other. Fred Harrison, I don't know if he knows of Neil Howe. Um, Neil Howe's got the generational cycle, about 80 to 90 years. Super, super interesting. If you guys are interested in being long-term investors, look at cycles, learn about cycles. It's really fun and interesting. Um, so the generational cycle is one of those, it leads to the, uh, the mean that you would have seen strong men create good times, good times create weak men, weak men create hard times, bad times, and bad times create strong men. So that's, if you could put that generational cycle into a meme, that's the way I would look at it. You may have heard that. You might not, you might not even agree with it. I don't know. It's something that I've seen in terms of the cycles. And so this cycle looks like it lines up with World War II around that time. So sort of your 80 to 90 years ago. And it looks like if I'm reading from what these guys are saying, Howe and Fred Harrison as well, that looks like what we're heading into later this decade, after 2026-ish. I don't have an exact time because I'm not a bit boy trying to call an exact top, but you can see it start to to work its way. Um, that I, I think is what's happening, and you can. I mean, I guess I have a quite a few Aussies on here. You can kind of start to see the governments repeating the same patterns of 80, 90 years ago, and people jumping on board with it. I don't understand why they haven't seen history or read about history or even just started to piece some of it together, regardless of what your opinion is of all of the stuff going on with the health and, you know, whether it's a good thing to to wear masks or not or vaxxers or whatever, okay? That's not what today's video is about. We're looking at the Bitcoin collapse. I had to bring that up because it's got to do with the cycles. This is repeating again and there is no chance in stopping it because that's what happens with cycles. When we go through winter into what are we going to next? <laughs> spring. I'm, trying, I'm getting mixed up with northern and southern hemispheres. Going to spring, which is what we're in now, and then we're going to summer. We can't stop summer from coming if we don't like the heat. You can move to a different hemisphere or somewhere a bit warmer, but the cycle is still going to be there regardless. That's what happens. We can't stop it. It is coming. So the point is to prepare for it. And my personal opinion in preparing for it is uh, protecting my wealth and protecting my health. 
All right. So obviously the wealth I look into comes down to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and my health. I like to look after that in other ways. You didn't come here to listen to me go on about my, my daily routines of health. We're looking at markets collapsing onto the big news headline. So I need to give some background about what I see in terms of macro views. And I will listen to some of your comments later. I'm sure a lot of people will have different opinions. That's fine. You just got to stick to one and work with it the best you can. Okay. Um, Evergrande is an economic time bomb for China and potentially Australia. Sure. That's potentially true. And when you get these massive headlines, maybe it's towards the end of what the biggest problem is. The headlines of this sort of scale generally don't come out at the top. And to prove it to you, this is Evergrande. It's been going down since 2017. There has been a problem in China for four years, over four years. That's the peak in 2017. So the, the this is a glo oh, it's a second largest. So Evergrande is the second largest property de property developer by sales in China, making it the 122nd largest group in the world by revenue. That's why this is such a big deal, such a massive company. And they are trying to connect or give you an image of China collapsing, just like Lehman Brothers collapsing in the US, which was part of the GFC in 2000 and, uh, 2008. So in the years of the global, global financial crisis. So they're trying to bring these two words together. This is going to collapse just like it did in the US. All right. But in the US, the Lehman Brothers and, and what was going on there, they had the peak in the stock market in around October 2007. And then the Lehman Brothers news came out here in September that week. Uh, so here it is. At the time, Lehman Brothers shut down on September 15th. September 15th is this green bar here. And it had one, two, three more weeks of panic. And it was basically over. Now, you might say, well, it's not basically over. Look at all these extra down bars, etc. Look, that was around 850. It dropped to about 670. All right. So it's not that much compared to where it had come from. And in terms of a time frame, it was just clearing out the rest of the weak hands before it quickly recovered back into that same zone of the final collapse there. And then the market, you know what happens next. The rest is history. It has never gone that far, that low again. So here we go. Is China Evergrande going to collapse the market? My personal opinion, I'm sticking my neck out really far here on a line. I would say not at this stage from my understanding because I think the smart money has known about this for a very long time. And if they didn't, they would have caught on at some point when the market began to break down through these lows of 13. And you can see it just trickling off, trickling off, it escalated in the last couple of weeks, breaking the COVID crash lows, which is pretty weak, very weak. And so this has been going on. This has been this this market has been terrible since 2017. I don't know why it's just a massive thing now. Sure, it has gone from 10 bucks to two dollars. That's huge. That's another 80% correction. But again, the trend has been down for many, many years. I'm sure insiders in the company knew something was up from that point in time. Same could be said for the Hang Seng Index. You got the index up here, January, February, 2018. 2018, that was around the top of the Australian property market before we slumped, crashed into the COVID low, and then we have springboarded the hell out of that low. I'm not saying that's going to be the same for China. I'm just saying that we topped in similar points. And so 2018, this is the Hang Seng, okay, the Chinese or the Hong Kong index over here. Market has not seen a higher, uh, higher high since 2018. Markets have been down. The only point I'm trying to make here is people know what's going on, but the news comes out and it's all of a sudden a huge, a huge problem that we need to solve right now. And I think they've already been knowing about this for years. I'm sure many of you guys have probably mentioned that in the comments. Um, that is what it is. Like I'm sure people have seen this already. Or they, they're, they're piecing together what's going on. It's not just a, a problem that started a week ago. All right. So that's China collapse. I don't think that is going to happen just yet. For one, it's been known for some time, at least in the charts, the smart money, I'm just following what they're doing. 
sticking my neck out on the line here because I am actively investing in these markets and I have to make a decision. That's just what I have to do. And two is the overall cycles, the major cycles, which I um, put here on a tweet. So I'm looking at my 18.6 year, roughly 17 to 23 years. Okay. So it's about a 20 year cycle, give or take a few years, 80 to 90 year cycle. It's a generational cycle. That's really interesting too. You can find out about that on YouTube. And then Fred Harrison is also looking at a very similar thing. Phil Anderson's done a lot of work from Fed, Fred Harrison's work who called the financial collapse in 2007. He called it many, many years earlier, but wasn't saying the market would crash every year. That's a big difference. A lot of people say the market will crash every single year, but eventually they're right. You know, it's a even a broken clock is right twice per day, but they're not calling the market to crash every single year, they're saying this is the cycle, approximately this time it will crash, and then we move on again. So they're my two big reasons. Why I don't think this market is going to absolutely fall out of the sky. Let us move on now to Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies before I get into some of your questions and come across to see how much hate or love I'm getting in the comment section. Bitcoin, we have fallen through some of the support levels. We've gone through our 50%, which we have been watching, 46,700, roughly speaking. So that's from the top to the, the bottom. So you can call this the bear trend, the bear market, the downtrend, the bull market correction. It's all the same thing at this point, unless the market then takes out this 28 to 30K low. All right. So then we could definitely say, well, this is a bear market and this was a bear market rally. So a relief rally. Yep. <laughs> a relief in the, bear, in, the, in the bear market trend and we get continued downside. That, that's when we would say we were wrong. All right, when we start to break down through these support levels. I know it's a long way from that point in time. Some people might want to sell out earlier than that. I'm not saying yes or no to a bear market at this point because I don't have enough information and uh, I'm, I'm happy to do that. This is getting higher risk as the market goes up further. So today, what, what has happened? We're on a daily chart here. We have now fallen for the last, what are we at? Nearly four hours. And we've gone from about 47.5K to the low of around 45. So we're still holding in there. The volume is much higher than what uh, than the previous days as well. And we've only been in the market for about four hours. So this should hopefully increase a lot more. I guess for the hopium side, you want to see this spike and then come back as low as possible so you can get an entry and then come back as high as possible and close above these areas here, that would be a really good sign. Close at, at least above that low there to give us an idea that yes, the market has found a lot of strength in that. And sure, there could be another few days after that that, that trickle down or bounce around. But ideally, I want to see a close above that level around that 43K. So we've uh, hit rejection at around that 48K, which is the 50% of here. We've broken down now past the major 50%. That's of the this range and our last or well, supports at around the 43 and also around that 40k so we're not that far off from any of these so i think if anything comes up of a 10% or 13% you know 10 to 15% it's not going to freak me out of the market if we broke down the 28s that would definitely freak me out of the markets unless it's a spike low you know there's always that difference between a grinding and uh and a market not coming back, something like this, right? You know, it falls, 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 comes back and retests those those lows and then crashes away. That's a really weak sign. Uh, but, you know, down and then a back in, easy. So Bitcoin still looking okay. ADA was the big one. Yesterday's video, uh, I don't have that up here, but yesterday's video was, I was saying, you know, the, the final last chance for ADA to hold up its ground at 230 and I happened to get that just in the last few hours. So there's there's 2.30 there. And we knocked on that multiple times and we finally broke through that level. And so then yesterday's video, look, I just got lucky on that timing. It could have taken a few more days. It could have been within that same hour that I put the video out. I, like I said, I don't really go towards the timing too much because it can sway. Yeah, there's, a, there's a fair degree of change in that time. Uh, but looking at this low, you know, that, that's my sort of, that's my level there, two bucks and my other lows at around $1.90. All right. 
here's the previous resistance. And so like on our other chart, uh, I think I've lost all my, my drawings on here. I'm going to draw them all back in. But for now, let's have a look at the rectangle. There we go. So around 180 to 220 is where we currently sit. It's on support. That's resistance. It's been found as support once before. So ideally, that's about as far as I'd like to see this go. And if I look at my 50%, Fifty percent at about two dollars because we've gone from one dollar to just over three dollars as well. So that's ADA. All right, I think I've answered that question. We've been going for a little while now, about twenty minutes. Let's get over to some Q and A's. Before I do, maybe you can stake your Cardano with the Investor Accelerator pool. You can find a link to all of that on the website. Here's the new website. Learn about crypto, all that sort of stuff. And then if you guys are interested in TIA Lite, so you've got the Patreon. So far, I can see there's about 14 left. You can find that in the links down below. And if you want some, uh, uh, you want some understanding between the difference of TI Lite and TI Premium, it's on the website here. So you can just go through, go to the website, link down below, and you can see what you get in each of the uh, in each of the courses and the memberships there. Cool guys, let's bring up one of my charts. Come across to you guys in the comments. Just going to put my screen on so I can flick backwards and forwards. Excellent. All right. GW Cabs, you stopped the dump again with your stream. Excellent. You guys are holding up the markets. That's what it's about. FTT. That's a good one to start with. Thank you, everyone, as well. We got 2,000 online, about 400 likes. Let's get it to 1,000 likes and just wipe out some of these, these dislikers. They don't like what I have to say about the, uh, the economy or something What's something else. I don't know what they're, up, what they're up against. FTT, I'll start there and then we'll come back to some of your questions and comments. If you guys want to ask some questions about cycles in the market, I'd be glad to get into that. FTT, not the strongest, is it? not the strongest horse that we have once saw. There's my level 54 bucks because that's where the highs are. And here is my 50% level. Again, it comes out at $54. That, that is a nice symmetry there. The market put in $54 and then gave us a high, double the exact range that we saw here. So around 22 to 54 Quick maths, make sure my maths is right. Is that 32? So 54 plus 32, 86. Beautiful. The market is fantastic when it comes to the, these mathematics and just symmetry. All right, 54, not bad. I'll probably buy a little bit more at this point. API is going off. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, so it broke down. I had a very, just a very close alert there just to let me know. So that's breaking down. What else we got? <laughs> is that what's going on? All right. Why are some people mad that someone has a plan they don't agree with? I didn't see all the, I guess, hate comments or stuff that people were offended by when it comes to the macro cycles. <laughs> Market cycles, of course. Who cares about some alts that just going to retrace more than BTC now? Good point. We've got some of the alts which are retracing more than BTC. One in particular which I was crucified at at the time back in May and June for not buying was Theta. And I stuck by my word on Theta. I don't have anything against the project. I have nothing against the project. I just didn't see it as a good time to be buying Theta. So this is May crash and it was buy the dip. I said, sure, it was a great trade, just like Matic was as well. You could have held it for a couple of weeks here. If you sold out at the top, fantastic. You got, a, you know, maybe you took a chunk out of the middle. You got doubling on your Bitcoin value. But since that point, unfortunately for Theta, it has been down and down and down and it's just been bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. It is, it is getting very close to putting in a new low for this trend. 
That is not a cryptocurrency that I choose to hold. Because it's losing value against Bitcoin. And I could just hold Bitcoin and get the same gains from it. It's losing value against Bitcoin. It's losing value against its USD because Bitcoin is obviously going down now. Um, but if it's if it's maintaining its USD value, you know, going sideways and Bitcoin is going up, then it will have to be bleeding against Bitcoin. So I'm just increasing my risk for the same or lesser return. All right, let me come back to you guys. It's all about you today, not about me. Uh, super sticker. Thank you, Scott. 20 bucks. Thank you very much. You guys don't don't have to give um, super chats. Obviously, I can see them more easily, but I'm not trying to ask for any of these super chats to come through. I'm not, disc I'm not um, ungrateful either. Very grateful for them. Um, thoughts on DGB. Jason asks, thoughts on DGB? 699 Canadian. I have not looked at DGB since 2017 when it was all the rage in 2017. DGV Tether. Uh, I mean that that kind of says it's found its found its level and it's on the way down again. You don't want to see it break down from three and a half cents, which is where it was at three point three, three point two, because that was also previous tops. See that double bottom? That's a good bounce from the double bottom, and you can see it came back to the old tops as well. Where we currently are, I'll be looking at a 50% level and it has broken down from the 50%. So that's that's on the weaker half. And then you've got probably this little level here of around 4.2 cents. The last line of support would be that 3.2, 3.4 cents. All right. I'm not saying all of this is going to crash to oblivion either. It's just what the chart is showing now. This could be a few hours. It could be a few days. Could be a few weeks. New Zealand tent Levy, Levi, sorry, Levy, Levi. Hey, Jason, I'm across the ditch in New Zealand. What's your take on current housing cycles? Wanting to buy a house in the next few months. Cheers, bro. Uh, I would go back to this again. Secret life of real estate and banking. And look at my Twitter. Go to Twitter. I post about it. I have linked the author of this book as well. And in terms of the cycle, I think New Zealand tends to be first in that regard. And they, t they tend to lead it with the property cycle. And this goes for the entire world. We're always looking at um, the US is the major market. So they hold the bulk of the land value. It's not necessarily the house, but the US is, is one of the big leaders. New Zealand's up there. And then, of course, we start to follow through Australia, UK, some of the Western developed stuff in, in Europe and the developing countries are uh, also starting to follow this cycle as well. So when we do get that big crash, because we are all becoming in, in symmetry, uh, I don't know if that's the right word, but if we're all coming together in the cycle, it's going to lead to a bigger crash. Uh, Klaus, five Aussie bucks. Any thoughts on Meta Hero? I have seen that pop up a lot, and so I was reluctant to look at it because I thought i don't see a chart on it give me the give me the ticker symbol if it's even out maybe it's just a an ido or an ico so i was reluctant to look at it because i saw it coming up so much and generally when that happens if you guys see that in the comments usually that crypto has pumped already wargasm ada is garbage too many tokens to pump they need burning i don't necessarily think they need burning i don't think so Charles Hoskinson has also talked about that a bit and why he thinks the you don't need burning for ADA. But are you concerned with us failing to meet debt obligations and broader effects on resource sector impacts of real estate slowdown in China? Not necessarily. I know that it will have some effect and this could be that time through 2000. And 21, 2022, where we get some instability in the market. We have been going up. We need some sort of some sort of uh, news event that causes us to get that retrace that we've been looking for. So the cycle is in motion and then news events, when they come out at the right times in the cycle, they're the things that set off the cycle to get the, the retrace and the timing in the market to have that cool down. Shane, hey Jason, a few of the younger generations been screaming at me with Hather. Any thoughts on Hather? Is this a crypto? Shoot me the 
ticker symbol. Had the tether. I assume this is what it is. That looks like a bit of it. Well, it looks like it's in a downtrend now. It's better to not have bought as it was screaming up into the tops. 50%. Looks like she's just breaking down from the 50% at the moment too. Oh, it's sitting on support at the moment and you've got lower volume as the market is trending down. Uh, let's look at some other support and then you've got tops. You've got some support back here. So it's around 60 cents. You can see the top again here, high 50s, top again, bottoms. So something around there also could be a good support level as well. Thanks, Shane. <laughs> Uh, dot, dot has been a big one. Dot, dot, dot. So I spoke about this in a previous video. You'll see it on the thumbnail. And I was looking at this as just getting its, like creeping its way higher, but being one of the weaker horses, which we had looked at because it didn't get the move on when the majors were getting their move on. Like Solana started to really crack the whip. So I don't think there's anything too bad with, with DOT at the moment. You can see the 50% also lines up with the test. And this test came in before the 50% was put in. And then you had the previous resistance as well. You saw the market crash in uh, on September 7th onto the 50% of 24 bucks. So if we get a consolidation above this level, uh, that's still in the strong zone of the 50%. So anywhere from that sort of 24 to where we currently are or that top of 38, hopefully we get some consolidation and then it tries its next move. You can see the volume is also dropping as well as we come down. So not as many sellers or volume of sales at the moment. Uh, is it better to set some limit orders in the 38k to 40k 44k range so andrew ho i'll just say andrew better set some limit orders in the 38 to 44 range or set alerts and watch the market don't want to miss a dip if there's any fast recovery i tend to do the latter like i'll set alerts and then watch the market now that does that sometimes means i don't get the exact bottom no problems like it is what it is uh, but you could, if you don't want to watch the market, then yeah, sure. You'd have to set the alerts between those levels. At this rate, I think 44 is a possibility. It's not far off now. Like I think anyone could really guess that. But 38 might be, might be a stretch. Could be a stretch. So I just wouldn't be, want to be disappointed and not get that 38. But you could set the alert and follow the market just in case there was a sign of the market reversing say it started to fall and crash through the uh, the 43k low and then start to find some support at 40 39 40k and not get to that 38 then definitely have your your alerts set so you could come back into the market i think i just missed someone else here we go bitcoin russ i hold 100k 100,000 ada at $1.70 what would you do I will not give financial advice on that position if that is in fact true. And uh, what would I do for my positions as I as I swallow? I would say I'm looking to get my initial capital off the table as fast as possible if I plan to reinvest that money into other cryptocurrencies. If you can't sleep at night with a position, then you probably got too much money in the market as well. All right, Chad, what's the theory on why we are seeing a solid dip? I think it's just the time in the market. There will be news that will come out in a few hours, tomorrow, the next day, that will tell you why it happened. But... I think it's just part of the timing of the market, to be honest. It just looks, to me, it looks better if we do get a retracement from here and we test these lows just to see whether we have some support to continue up with the market. Because right now, there's there's not that much volume in the market. It's like, where where is everyone? 
Why is it so low? Sure, we had a lot of volume on the way up, but right now there's just there's not it's not giving us much. I want to see something come back in like we saw in May. So there'll be news that will come out in a few hours or a few days to tell you why. Probably a liquidity event or um, you know, like longs getting liquidated or shorts getting liquidated. There's always one of those things going on. And you might think I'm too blasé about it all and there's got to be a real solid reason about it. But once you're following it for so long, it you forget all of the reasons why. It doesn't really matter. It's just it's just what happens in the cycle. It continues to happen time and time again. Like we've talked about this. September is usually crap. Next month will be sunnier. You know, it every year is very similar and there'll be some new things that happen at that time. The feel of the market is we've just gone on a, a two-month run or a you know, a six week run, we need to have some, some time to relax. Could it not, could it not be the Chinese banking problems for this Bitcoin correction? I don't, I don't think so. Tomorrow you'll probably find out if it was in the news or it was just liquidations on whatever, BitMax, BitMEX, if I start to fill my head with too many of these reasons why I can't get on with actually making money, maybe you've felt that as well. If you can just clear out the noise, it's so much easier to, to navigate the market. I just want to have a macro view of what's going on. Ben Cowan's, I used to call him Cohen, but yeah, it's C-O-W-E-N. So I guess Cowan. Is that American? I don't know. At look that the cycle goes well into 2022. Look at this rate. If we get the hold up and we find some support at that high 30s to low 40s and we start to bounce around and, and, and stair step our way out of this level, then sure, it could go, it could go well into 2022. There's also the, the option that I look at. Um, uh oh. My air conditioner. We'll worry about that later. Um, there is also the possibility that the market has a bigger move up and then it corrects pretty solidly and then we get a quick bull market again before we get a very long, drawn-out bear market. Something like, let's get this up here. I'll get rid of some of these so we can see a little better. All right, so we move up, we test these tops, we'll get close to it, we re, uh, retrace, come back onto the 50,000s, we move up you know, into this early, this first quarter of 2022, for example, maybe we hit around that 120, and then we come back and we've got about six months down here, and then we go again really quickly, but then that becomes what Bob Lucas calls it a left -hand translated cycle, left-hand translated cycle, and then we get the long drawn out bear markets which come back and test these levels and we're sort of down here for for a long time i'll just bring that in so you can see a little better cool that's what i'm thinking when it comes to the cycles overall so i've got two ideas there we get a quick move into the peak of this cycle then we get another medium-term correction that goes into another quick peak, which people will then say, well, this last peak isn't really the cycle top. It would be this peak. But you just got to look at terms of your cycles because then this peak would be up there and then we would get this long, drawn-out dump while everyone is thinking, oh, we're only going to get a, a dump like this. We're only going to get a short dump because that's what we saw last time and that's what we saw last time. And then it doesn't happen and we get this long dump and everyone gets fooled. Maybe it comes down for a bit, we get a bear market re uh, rally and then it comes out and continues this long move down. So there's no there's no set rule to any of this game. It's just to be on the on alert. <laughs> Salamander says it's over. I think BTC was just crab from 35 to 55 maybe next one to two years that's a long time I, I, 
there's, there's a lot of people in the game at the moment. I think that it needs to come to some sort of ending and just wipe a lot of people away because there are some people that there is a lot of people who are here that are just here for quick gains and I think it needs to wipe some of those out and then it, some people need to get that gain and then they'll just take off and everyone will get bored again. Salamander, kidding. <laughs> cool. Any more comments about the cycles and what's going on there? Otherwise, I think this is a good place to wrap up the live stream. Thank you very much, guys. I've got 2,200 online. Make sure you've hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. If you are interested in learning more about cryptocurrency trading and investing, check out the Patreon links are down below. Click on that. There's also the free newsletter down there. I don't often talk about that, but we do a newsletter once every two weeks. Uh, link to that is down below. And when I say we, it's my brother and I. He also has a YouTube channel, Michael Pizzino. He trades short-term on Bitcoin, ETH, and the majors. So check his channel out as well. Twitter, Instagram, really good places to keep up to date. I can update you there so much quicker. You'll be back in a few hours as the market crashes, hey? Let's have a look, see where it is. So before we wrap, let's say that 43K level, if that breaks, you don't want to see it come back and then test the underside and fall away again because then you've got lower highs and lower lows. A breakdown, maybe a spike low and then back into this zone, that would be fantastic. Breakdown, hit the low, higher low, then we break. That's also bullish. That's what we want to see. We want to get volume back into the market. That's what we want. I thought you just uh, gave me a super chat of 39K. I was like, what the hell? 7.99 inverse HNS at 39K, inverse head and shoulders. Love it. Justin, thank you, mate. Cheers, Bitcoin. Russ, Zeb, no worries. All right, well, hopefully I answered the questions for everyone. China collapse. Go back to the beginning of the video. I've got a solid 15 to 20 minutes on cycles. So come back to this video as well. We looked at Evergrande collapsing. Will that affect the entire world market caps? I know cryptocurrency is often uh, just the main focus of what we look at and we forget about everything else. But the cycle land values is where the majority of the money is. The land, the land, it can't be reproduced. That is the original Bitcoin. That is where it's at. So that's where all of the profits end up back at the end of a cycle, which is why we end up collapsing extremely heavy. It's all mentioned in this book. It's happened for over 200 plus years and it'll continue to happen as long as we have credit systems and the land is privatized. Cool. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you once again for all of your support. I've said that many times. We've done a great live stream. I'll check you guys at the next video. See you in Patreon. Links to that down below and Twitter and Instagram. Love your time here. I'll catch you then. Until then, have more fun to get more done.